I'm Emily Moshak, and you're listening to Tuned In to NoCo, Town Square Media's show that lets you know what matters in NoCo. I'm talking today with Craig Secker, the president and founder of Realities for Children, about sponsoring a nightlight through Town Square Media's Blue Christmas this December. So thank you so much for coming in again, Craig. It's great to have you back. But for our listeners who may be unfamiliar, can you tell me, what is Realities for Children? Yeah, absolutely. And thanks for sharing uh, our message and, and mission with everybody. Uh, Realities for Children is a, a nonprofit that is designed to provide for the emergency unmet needs of uh, abused, neglected, abandoned, and at-risk children in Northern Colorado. And uh, in addition to the emergency services, which we're most known for, we're actually kind of a whole child philosophy. We work with our kids throughout the entire healing process. So we provide programs, support, and resources uh, through the healing process and and also work with uh, programs to help break the cycle of abuse and, and have our children be in healthy places as they emancipate uh, so that they can go on to in, ha- have a healthy life. And that's really what our focus is, is providing for uh, at-risk children and letting them know that they're, they're not alone and giving them the resources that they need. And in terms of Larimer County, I think a lot of people, the issue of child abuse and neglect isn't always on the forefront of their minds. How big of an issue is it here in this area? And what do you think we need to be more aware of when it comes to this topic? I, th- I think that is the answer to the question is we just need to have more awareness. We, we live in a beautiful, affluent, educated community. Um, it's not a, a black eye to talk about domestic violence, child abuse, uh, the issues around sexual assault, all of those things. That's, that's, that's everywhere, unfortunately. And, it, and we're not excluded from that. So uh, I think a lot of times we, we are so fortunate that where we live, it, it does seem like it, it may not be an issue here or it's easier to turn a blind eye to it. But of course, that's the, the worst thing we can do. So it's, it's essential that as a community, we have that awareness about the issues and to kind of maybe put that into perspective. Um, on an average year, we're averaging between probably 6,500 and 7,000 new reports every year of child abuse in our community. Um, th- these are the, the reports that go in that need to be investigated and everything else. As far as the direct services that we provide, um, we work with uh, virtually every organization in Larimer County. We have, uh, we're going to be at 40 partner agencies in 2022 that, that come to us for emergency services and that ongoing support and resources that we spoke about. Um, but uh, we provided a little over, last year, a little over 15,000 children were provided services for. And our emergency funding is specifically uh, for children that would have slipped through the cracks otherwise and wouldn't have had those resources. So uh, on the emergency services side last year, we provided uh, funding for and services for 5,618 children. And to put that into perspective, that's, that's averaging 15 to 16 children every single day of the year that are coming to us for emergency needs that wouldn't be provided for elsewhere. So these are children in placement, going into placement, um, dealing with the, the effects of domestic violence uh, and, and abuse and neglect. Wow. Well, that's incredible that you are able to reach so many children here in the county. And speaking of that, we have your big fundraiser every year, Night Lights. We had it on Wednesday. Town Square was lucky enough to be there. It was so beautiful to see. But from your perspective... And for those who may not have been able to attend the event, how did it go? What was it like? Yeah, well, it was wonderful to have Town Square there. Of course, we had you on stage uh, emceeing and welcoming everybody that night. And it was wonderful to be able to come back together. This has always been an event about bringing community together for our children and, and you know, brightening the, li- brightening the lives of children in need and and uh, really increasing that awareness in our community about the issues of child abuse. So having to go to a complete broadcast last year uh, was, was wonderful. We had you know so many people tune in and still make this part of their tradition. But uh, there's something really special about being able to come together uh, more physically for, for our children. And so I think it was fantastic. We had you know 23 of our, of our agencies were there to share a little bit more about what they do. Of course, we had Santa Claus there and uh, Rocky Mountain Chocolate Factory's giveaway, the 33-pound chocolate Santa, Dude Dad, and you know we had we had a great musicians with Emma Marie and Steve Manchell, and um, I think the 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 highlight for me was that we had the opportunity to really engage community about this awareness piece, and having uh, Katana, one of our, our our youth, come up and share her story and the importance of a community coming together and giving a child a nightlight that's lost in the darkness of abuse and the, and the power of that uh, in their life was. True to me, that's the highlight, and I think if we, uh, there's so much wonderful things that go on. We call it the nightlight celebration because we're we're celebrating the services we can provide, 
But I think we can't miss the uh, importance of the action it requires of all of us of a community. And, and it starts with awareness and then it continues with involvement. And uh, I think we were able to really share that message and it was wonderful to be able to light up the night with so many people there in person. And honestly, so many of the youth that we serve were there as well. And so for them to be able to be a part of that and know that they have that family of support is, is, was wonderful. So I, I think it was a wonderful night. What did, what did you think? Did you enjoy yourself uh, from yes. your stage perspective as the <laughs> MC? Yes. Yes. It was so great to be able to be there and especially on stage because you do get to see everyone in the audience and who it's impacting and yeah, it was great to have everyone back in person. But we know that even though night lights, we light up the tree that night. It's going on all month long. You can still sponsor a night light. For our listeners who may be unfamiliar with this process, how does that work? How can they help? Yeah. So as we said, you know, we we really focus on the, our children that are are still in the in the darkness of abuse and neglect or feeling very alone, especially this time of year. We we see over the holidays a, a huge increase in, in the needs for support for domestic violence, children and, and children removed from the home, and even our children in placement that are, are going through really challenging times. So we see a huge influx. We, we expect to serve conservatively over 2,500 children in the month of December. So that was part of the reasoning for building the Nightlights Tree 24 years ago. And it is a free event for everyone to come down to. But like you said, the, it is really the kickoff of how do we reach further into that darkness? What is the action required of a community to do that? And and that is to give a child a nightlight. We, we literally can bring children out of the darkness of abuse. We can literally let them know that they are seen and they are heard and they are loved uh, by that action of, of getting involved. And um, simply, uh, we just ask people to be one of those lights on the tree for our children. And you can go to giveanightlight.com or to realitiesforchildren.com and go to the nightlights page. But at giveanightlight.com, you can make a donation. Every light on the tree is a hundred dollar donation. Thanks to our sponsors and our, our members, a hundred percent of that goes directly to emergency services and direct needs for, for the children that we provide for every day and helping us to make sure that no child's forgotten. Right. And speaking of, I know night lights goes to, like you said, emergency services, direct needs, but what is that impact really like? How have you seen this really make a difference in the lives of these children. Oh, my, well, you, you heard it firsthand from uh, Katana, who got up there and shared her story. Uh, I, I don't think I can put it any more clearly than, you know, there's a, there's this common message of despair in, in all of these children that are going through these these heartbreaking situations of, of really betrayal of people that were supposed to be caring and providing for them and putting them in these in harm's way. Uh, this feeling of darkness, this feeling of being unheard, unseen, unloved, and alone. And uh, we have seen lives changed. Uh, we've been doing this for 24 years. That means we've had generations of children that have been served by the nightlights that people donate on the Nightlight Street, people and families and uh, businesses uh, that can do that. And, and we have people do it in memory of a loved one or stocking stuffers. There's so many wonderful ways to to be part of that light in a child's life. But we have seen it uh, quite literally over 24 years be there for you know children as they come into the system and be through that supportive side of that, that entire healing process like, uh, like Katana who was able to share how powerful it was to be seen and to know that there's people that care and to know that they're, they're not alone. And that's, that's what the Nightlights Tree is about is being that beacon of hope to those kids, being that message of awareness in our community and creating a way that we can all come together you know, during a, a really needed time uh, to be that light in a child's life in a, in a very direct way. And obviously donating or sponsoring a nightlight is a great way to do this. But hearing this, I'm sure a lot of our listeners will want to get more involved. Can they donate in other ways? Can they volunteer? How can they reach out to oh, you? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we, we, like I said, we have many programs that are going on right now. We're in the middle of our Bikes for Tykes uh, process right now. We're a little short on bicycles for our kids that we provide. And that is a huge sense of freedom for children in foster care placement. And uh, we're we're still collecting those uh, new bikes uh, at Realities for Children through the through the eighth or ninth of of uh, December. We have um, uh, our Santa's workshop with about a hundred locations around the community where you can donate uh, new toys that we'll be providing for our children. And of course, we're always looking for volunteer needs from background check delivery drivers for for services and programs for our children to just being involved in from fundraising events like night lights uh, to some of our our direct services for our children, including our, our youth activities and that sort of thing and our distribution. So we, we like to think that there's a way for everybody to get involved and we want to open that door to no matter what your situation is, whether it's time 
or resources or talents that uh, we can invite everyone to help us to to reach further. But but this time of year, we're mostly looking for that voice. We need people to let people know that you know like you're we're able to share today with your listeners that. Um, everybody out there know that child abuse is a very real issue. Know that we can make a difference, but it's not something we just got to hope for. It's something that we need to, uh, as, as I stated, it's something that requires, you know, fierce and committed action. And it, it, and at this point, giving a child a nightlight, making that donation, uh, knowing that we're providing that a hundred percent to helping children when they need it most. Um, this is, this is where we can really have the rubber hit the road and, and have a huge impact over the holidays and, and well into the new year. Right. And it's always so exciting to hear about everything you have going on during the holidays, but we know the new year will be here soon. What else is in the books? What's going on? What can we look forward to? Well, so much of what we do on a daily basis, like I said, the emergency services, we're doing monthly youth activities for our kids to help kind of let a child be a child during difficult times. Um, our distributions are daily for so children that go into placement. Um, I'd recommend people uh, visit RFC, like Realities for Children, kindconnect.org. That's the kindness connection in our community. And you can register on there to be notified if we have item needs uh, for children. That's happening every single day. And, of course, we have a lot of community events in the new year as well. Our first one will be uh, in April, which is National Child Abuse Awareness Month. And that is uh, when we'll be hosting our awards gala, where we recognize the leaders in our community that are there for at-risk children. And also where we get to uh, really support those kids. We'll have all of our Triumph kids from 2021 be present as we get to recognize them in person, as well as hosting our Keeping Dreams Alive program, which is really designed for our younger children that are struggling in placement or struggling with their situation to know that we have a community that's there. So, so many ways to plug in, get involved and make a difference. And uh, I would encourage everybody over the course of December to make their way down to the Nightlights Tree. It's, it is lit every night. Uh, beginning at 5 p.m. It plays the music show, which uh, the whole animated lights and the music show is animated to local musicians' music. And I think it's happening every 30 minutes beginning at 5 p.m. Um, they can certainly uh, you know, be a part of that and help share what the, the Big Blue Tree is all about and, 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 what, and what we're trying to accomplish down there. Yes, I agree. The tree is beautiful. Every time I drive by, it's just um, such a great feeling. So good to see it. And I want to thank you again for coming in and sharing this message. It's always great to have you on. Is there anything else you would like our listeners to know? Uh, I just want to be able to say thank you. We've, we've been able to respond to a, a huge increase in needs through, during the pandemic. We saw our emergency services go up by over 2,000 children last year. And uh, I'm just thankful to everybody in the community that's helped us to, to be there for our children and make sure that we could uh, provide those services. So I know that so many people out there have found their way to, to help children in our community and get plugged in with us or our partner agencies and, and make a difference. And I just want everybody to know that that really is making a difference and that we are able to make sure that no child is forgotten and we couldn't do that without everybody getting involved. So thank you for that. Well, that's wonderful. Thank you, Craig. Thank you. Again, that was Craig Sacker with Realities for Children talking about Town Square Media's Blue Christmas. You can sponsor a light on the Nightlight Tree by visiting givenightlight.com.